this is the first in a series of a number of times I'm going to record some information on the internet. My name is Reverend Linda James. I am a ordained minister in the Disciples of Christ. And um, I also have a spirit name, which is Two Hawk Feathers. Um, and I am a minister uh, in the Sacred Hoop. Native American ministries. Um, this is not to be uh, really a preaching time, but more of a teaching and um, maybe some examples given of some things that I want to talk to you about. The main subject is going to be about what is sacred because um, I've been trying to learn about the word sacred, what it means, and also realizing that there are many things that are sacred to me. So this teaching is going to talk about sacred things and why we believe in sacredness. Um, so, Part of what we're going to talk about is uh, from Hebrew scripture and part of tonight and part of what we are going to talk about is from Native American tradition. One of the very most basic things among Native people is some of the things I have on the table. And those are uh, fire um, and uh, smudge, which has to do with uh, the burning of some, um, usually sage and tobacco. You can see there's a slight uh, smoke coming up for that from that right now, and. Uh, um, that is a representation, of course, uh, just as it is in scripture of prayer, where um, our intents um, are sent to God as the smoke of the fire rises. That's um, referenced in scripture and among many Native people's stories. Um, what... Um, is also interesting to me about sacred is the name of our ministry is sacred hoop and that is some strange words to many people so sacred of course has to do with usually something that's sanctioned by a deity or by the use of it in worship to our deity who we call God the Creator. So, um, one of the things that I wanted to start out with is to explain why I'm called Two Hawk Feathers, and that is because someone named me and said, uh, Know thyself and fear not, fly above things of the earth, see the greatness of creation, know that time is fleeting, see both sides of a feather, are beautiful yet different and that was the proclamation of a prophecy that was made over me when I was given two hawk feathers that fell while the person was uh, trying to discern my name and so they mentioned in there how different the feather can look from the front to the back and they also mentioned about seeing things from far above the earth and uh, both of those things apply to learning about the hawk and I said about doing that because to me it seems as if the hawk is very special and so someone might say the hawk is sacred to me because of my name. Others um, have many other sacred things. Um, here I have water and rocks, which represents the earth and the oceans, 
um, many people feel like all of the all of God's creation is the sacred place, um, and so this represents the many different facets of our land. Some of it's smooth, some of it's rough. Um, the oceans itself have many different uh, kinds of rocks and shells and animals, and we're all very much aware of that uh, in these modern times when we can hear more about the oceans and what they mean to us. Another thing that's sacred, uh, as far as Native people is concerned, is I have this little pile of dry substance on the table and it is tobacco. So in the Cherokee way of thinking, tobacco was given to them as a very special gift from God the Creator and that gift has to do with prayer and meditation. It didn't have anything to do with making cigarettes or smoking. Uh, necessarily like we think of it today. It had to do with filling a pipe, which I do not have and cannot show you. A person is only given a pipe and given the uh, permission to use a pipe when they become a pipe carrier. And I'm not a pipe carrier. Um, so, in looking at the whole idea of sacred, I thought about that and looked at some things and people all over the world have a deity. Maybe they have a different name for that deity, but they believe that that one, or in some cases in the Hindu tradition, many names uh, are sacred and those beings that represent those names are sacred. In the Hebrew scripture, the people actually believed that the text that was written down as they received words from God was sacred text. So it's a little bit of different uh, meaning than these things that I talked about on the table. Because what's written down is really ideas, isn't it? So um, they called it sacred text because not the ideas were all that great, you know, and exactly perfect, but that they believed that God had given those words and so that made that text sacred and they believed that it was actually the words of God and therefore it was not only sacred but worthy of praise and all of this is going to come around to the end of our time together in this teaching of seeing what that means for us, whether we are native people or whether we are from the Asian continent uh, or if we are from uh, the islands or if we are from Europe, those ideas can come around to have meaning for us, whether we even believe in the Hebrew scripture or not. But you will see, hopefully, in this teaching, that it's very important to pay attention to what you believe is sacred. In the culture of the Hebrew people, God was called worthy also. In other words, having great worth. That's quite extraordinary. And then... They applied that to the scripture and said that the words of God then had great worth. So that it was like having some great gem or jewel that you uh, possessed. Um, 
There's even some scripture that talks about the word of God as the pearl of great price. The son believed that only God is sacred. Only God. In other words, people are not. I can't really begin to believe that because from the earliest records, we have examples of God reaching out to have communion with people. If we are, as many would say, evil, then why would God want to commune with us in such a very intimate and special way? I believe that we are sacred too. Maybe not in the same way that we think of God as being sacred, but surely it is true that we have a sacredness about us. Someone says, no, we are not sacred. People are evil. Well, this just cannot be true. I have many, many reasons not to believe that is true. So I wanted to look at that a little more closely. God has made us and we are um, a creation. You can't say anything else about people because we are actually made within our mother's body. Psalm 139 talks about this very thing. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I think that many cultures have a deity who they believe is that uh, life-giving part of our lives who takes part in that knitting us together the scripture talks about so i cannot believe that we are in essence evil you and i are sacred and have been given three relationships to take part in our lives so the one, of course, is with the God, the deity that we know, who some call creator and some have many other names. But it is that one who has made all things that many people hold to be sacred. We must have a relationship with that deity, that God who calls us out. And I know many people who seek to know that uh, creative force in, in this world and beyond. Many people are aware of that kind of creative force. And I believe that we must have a relationship with that creative force who I call creator, I call God the creator, because it helps us to be aware of the existence of that which is beyond us. I believe you cannot be balanced in your life without knowing there is something much greater than yourself. Then the second relationship is with the world in which we live. To be aware of how we should live in the natural world. Maybe some would say that just has to do with my native heritage. And I say no, because the scripture tells us that this world is important that it supplies what we need, that it speaks to us of God's worth and God's 
care for us and even the long word called providence where God supplies what we may need as we live our lives. I believe that this second relationship is just a, as important as the first. And the third relationship that I'm going to talk about is that with all living beings. I believe that we have a responsibility, not just to the earth itself, but to all of us who are riding on this very, very large spaceship through time and space. But especially important is the relationship we have with other humans. Maybe those relationships for you make up a family and that's the biggest group that you have in your life. Maybe a clan, a clan or a town might be a relationship in which you take part through civic organizations or through knowing your clan mothers uh, or clan fathers uh, experiences and their traditions. Then the next larger group you might be involved with is the tribe or the state. Some people even become politicians in an entire state or within the tribe, um, elders and honored uh, grandmothers. Or there is the people that you are a part of. You may have influence in a great number of people who are like a nation. And the Hebrew scripture I want to read about that is Isaiah 63. <clears throat> because this is important. Uh, you know, uh, there is a story in the scripture that uh, Isaiah, the prophet, um, I'm not going to read it. I'm going to tell you real quickly. He was um, in a place and in a time when the king had died. And he had a vision that he was going to be able to somehow understand what God wanted him to do because of this crisis in his country. And as he saw more of the vision, he was able to know that he was the one who was being called. And he heard the voice of God and all of that power of all creation calling him and said, Here am I, send me. And the answer came back that he was the one who was sent to speak to his people. This is a prime relationship that I want us to begin to understand as we have these times together about the sacred. But I want you to understand more than anything else that the sacred of you, your own sacredness, means that as you see others, each person is sacred. Each person is a gift of God. And we must learn that so that we can overcome the evil forces in our world and we can stop damaging others by our actions and our hatred, maybe. So we ask, I ask you to consider the sacredness of yourself and the others that you see in everyday life. Thank you for listening.